All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've given you my top 10 point guards, shooting guards, and small forwards. So you know what today is, right? It's the top 10 power forwards for the 2019-2020 NBA season. Look, this one was tough. You know, I thought the point guards was kind of tough. Shooting guards was really, really hard to rank. Then we got into the small forwards. Now we're in the power forwards. And before I give you mine, I want you to tell me who are your top 10 power forwards for next season. So we're not talking about who was the best last year. We're talking about who you think is going to be the best next season. There's a lot of talent that just missed the cut on this list. I mean, it was difficult, but I had to cut these guys out. I'll tell you up front. Kevin Love, Marvin Bagley, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Aaron Gordon. Those were the first four that just missed this top 10. They're all going to be great, but not good enough. More guys that didn't make this list. Kyle Kuzma is probably going to be the Lakers' starting power forward. Al Horford now moving to that starting four spot. Boyan Bogdanovich, yeah, he's a small forward, but he'll be playing power forward next year for the Jazz. And then DeMontis Sabonis is going to start next to Turner, but, man, these are, the, these are eight guys who definitely were in consideration for this top ten, but just didn't make it. So let's give you the top ten. Right now, it's the projected rookie of the year. It's Zion Williamson. I know it's hard because, yeah, he is a rookie. He's going to be a rookie. I don't know exactly how good he's going to be, but I am confident in saying that he'll be good enough to be a top 10 power forward in the league next season. You know, he showed in the, the limited time that we got to see him in the summer league that that manpower and that brute strength that he showed at Duke is going to translate to the NBA. Questions I have for Zion are two things. Is he going to be the go-to guy in New Orleans, or is it more of Drew Holiday for now, Brandon Ingram maybe even? And will his jump shot come around? Because those are two things that could hold him back from being a top 10 power forward. Next season, Pelicans, they got a brand new look. One guy in that starting five that was there last year in Drew Holiday. Now you get Lonzo Ball. Brandon Ingram's the starting small forward with, of course, Zion Williamson in at the power forward position. Hey, the dude could even play some small ball center if he really wanted to. But right now I've got Derek Favors starting in that position. So this should be an easy one but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Should Zion be the favorite for Rookie of the Year? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of Ys in the comment section, but if you type your N for no, tell me who your favorite for Rookie of the Year is in 2019, 2020. Let's get into number nine, LaMarcus Aldridge of the San Antonio Spurs. Honestly, I kind of overlooked him at first, kind of forgot you know, he was even there, but he made the All-Star team last season. He's one of the most consistent power forwards in the NBA today. And, you know, because the, the Spurs are limited at the center position, he'll probably play a little bit there. They've got Jakob Pertl, but I don't really trust him. So Aldridge can play that four or five position. Right now, I've got him starting as a power forward for the Spurs next season. Now, as an all-star, the, the numbers speak for themselves. 20 point, 21 points per game and nine boards. That's what LaMarcus Aldridge is going to do. He's going to be a double-double threat on a nightly basis. Of course, he can hit that mid-range jumper. He can play with his back to the basket. Whatever you need him to do as a big man, Aldridge has been able to reliably show that he can do that. And do you guys love the NBA? I mean, you're watching all of our NBA shows. I know you are. So if you love the NBA and you love us here at Chat Sports, because I love you guys, get us to 150,000 subscribers. We're sitting at more than 130K, but... I don't care about 140, I want 150. So help us get there, hit that big red button, subscribe to Chat Sports today. Let's go to number eight. Now this one is a bit of a projection. This is like, hey, I, I, I'm predicting this guy's going to take another big step forward in his career. It's John Collins of the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, you know, from his rookie year to his second year in the league, he already took the big steps forward. He started playing with an elite point guard in Trey Young. And next year, you know, he's gonna be playing with guys like Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter will be there. Trey Young will be going into his second season. I think Collins is realistically a potential all-star in the Eastern Conference with the Atlanta Hawks. You know, he's a great power forward. He's super athletic. He can catch lobs. He's shown that he has a little bit of a jumper, but it's not exactly reliable quite yet. So once it becomes reliable, and I think that happens this year, he's easily a top 10 power forward in the NBA next season. Do you guys love 2K? Because I sure love 2K. I love 2K. I love chat sports. I love the NBA. I love it all. So get it all together. Go use our friends at my bookie. Sign up and deposit. You get a 100% deposit bonus. $100 down, you're going to get $100 back. It's quite simple with my bookie. You place that first bet and then email us promo at chatsports.com. 
we'll hook you up with a free copy of NBA 2K20. Let's keep it rolling with the top 10 power forwards for 2019-2020. It's Draymond Green in at number seven. Of course, received a huge, I mean, I mean, just got the bag from the Golden State Warriors to stay there for quite a while, probably the rest of his career, honestly. And you know, now there's no Kevin Durant. Klay Thompson's out for a, a, at least through the All-Star break. And then you got Steph and D'Angelo Russell. Draymond Green's gonna be a primary option once again this next year for the Golden State Warriors. So the biggest question mark I have for Draymond is, is he going to be a product, as productive as he usually is with more offensive touches? I believe he will be. That's why I've got him number seven on my top 10 list. Next year, this lineup for the Warriors, it, it looks a little bit different. You got Steph and D'Lo in the backcourt. I guess Alfonso McKinney is your starting small forward. And then Willie Cauley-Stein in at the five and Draymond in at the four position. Of course, Draymond gets it done on both ends of the floor. That's why you got to have him in this top 10 no matter if you love him or you hate him. But let me know how you feel about Draymond Green, because I know there's there's big opinions on both sides of it. You either love him or like him or you hate him. If you love slash like Draymond, type L in the comment section below. If you hate him, that's fine. You can be a hater, hater Jimmy here. I, I know all about that. Type H down below. Let me know how you feel about Draymond Green. Number six, Lori Markinen of the Chicago Bulls. I'm a big time fan of Lori Markinen and what he does on the floor you know he hasn't been exactly healthy you know his rookie year he only played 68 games his second year he missed you know he only played around 50 games for the chicago bulls so that health is a big question mark but when healthy i mean when he is there and present for the bulls he is a top tier offensive big man in the league because he can do everything he's so versatile he can stretch the floor he can get to the rim he's a good back to the basket guy too you know, last season when he played in limited games for the Bulls, he put up 19 points and nine boards. I mean, that's incredible from a guy that's really supposed to be a stretch four if you're pulling down that many rebounds. Of course, the 36% speaks for itself when you talk about being a stretch four in Laurie Markkinen. I think this year is the year he finally gets 100% healthy, plays close to 75 to 82 games, and becomes a dominant force for the Chicago Bulls. Pascal Siakam, my number five power forward for this next season. He, he's going to be in that most improved player conversation once again. He already won it, and now it's time for him to take another step forward as a focal point in this Toronto Raptors offense. Last year, it was it's all about Kyle Lowry. It was all about Kawhi Leonard. Now it's all about Pascal Siakam. This season is going to be dedicated to making sure he is an all-star caliber player, and I believe with the amount of touches he's going to get on the offensive end of the floor, Siakam can be that. Now, his versatility both on the offensive end and like Draymond Green on the defensive end just speaks to how great this dude really is. This starting five for Toronto isn't exactly championship caliber, but I still think it's pretty solid. Kyle Lowry, maybe it's Norman Powell in there. I'm sure that position's a little bit fluid. OG Ananobi's gonna get healthy. Mark Gasol's coming back. And then you got Siakam, who can play the four or the five sometimes as well. I, I'm a big fan of Pascal Siakam and becoming a go-to player could be, no, I take that back. It will be the best thing that will happen in his career in Toronto. So I'm projecting him to be a first-time All-Star next season. But who do you think will be a first-time All-Star next year? Maybe it's Luka Doncic, maybe it's Pascal Siakam, whoever you think it might be. Let me know. Give me your thoughts and opinions there. Speaking of Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks, my number four power forward is Kristaps Porzingis. Now, of course, the dude hasn't played since 2018. He tore his ACL and obviously kept him out for a year and a half. But that half year that he did play in 2017, 2018, he was an all-star. I mean, they call him the unicorn for a reason. He does things that a seven foot three guy should not be able to do. Look, the Mavericks are super confident that he's gonna come back in better shape than he ever was in New York. He's adding muscle. He's getting that knee healthy. They're hoping he can play that 70 to 82 game season. And we'll see if he can actually do that maybe longer if the Mavs can sneak into the playoffs. You know, injuries and rebounding are the, are the biggest question marks that you'll always have with Porzingis because a seven foot three, he should be closer to that nine to 10 rebounds per game mark. But you know, when he was healthy, he only got 6.6 .6 boards per game. But the 23 points, the two and a half blocks, and 40% from three point, uh, the dude's special. And when he's healthy next season, he's gonna be a top five power forward in the NBA. I have to ask this, because it was a hot topic when the trade went down. 
I think mostly the New York Knicks fans are the ones that believe this, but I want to know from you. Do you think Kristaps Porzingis is a snake? Um, and if you do, I, I want to see a bunch of snake emojis in the comment section. I'm going to say no because uh, I'd probably want out of that New York Knicks situation as well if I were Porzingis, but that's just me. You can hate on me for that opinion, but I want your opinions. Do you think Kristaps Porzingis is a snake? All right, number three, Blake Griffin. The dude was special last season for the Detroit Pistons. I mean, they were MVP caliber. If that team were a little bit better, Blake Griffin could have been in the MVP conversation, but the Pistons just weren't that good. And, you know, when it came playoff time, when it was, hey, Blake Griffin, this is your team, show up in the playoffs, he got hurt, and that held him back from being even more special than he could have been, or even more special than he was, I should say. Last year with the Pistons, 24 and a half points per game. It was a big transition year, obviously. He was going from the Clippers to the Pistons. That was a big thing that happened. 25 points, eight boards, five assists. He showed that he's basically a point forward at this point in his career. And 36.2% from three. I will say this about Blake Griffin. I have not seen a player in the NBA change their game more than Blake Griffin. At first, he was all dunks, all the time, top 10 on SportsCenter every single night. And now, he's point forward Blake Griffin that is a threat to make a three-point shot you can't leave the guy open and next year I think he proves that again and he'll be a top three power forward in the NBA now let's go to number two and you see Paul George on here and you're like wait a second Jimmy that guy's not a power forward I okay I get that in all reality he's not but also in all reality the NBA is completely positionless and really none of this even matters but Paul George is taller than Kawhi Leonard and they're both going to be starting at the forward position. So you got to choose one to be a small forward and one to be a power forward. You saw Kawhi in my top 10 small forward list. Now you see Paul George in my top 10 power forward position. And he's number two because he was an MVP caliber player last season. He came in third to Giannis and James Harden. You know, with joining forces with Kawhi Leonard, the best player he's ever played with. You know, will those numbers take a dip a little bit? I think that's fair to say. But that doesn't change the fact that he'll still be a top two talent when it comes to power forwards. This is what we predict here at Chat Sports to be the starting lineup on day one for the Clippers. Patrick Beverly and Landry Shamit in the backcourt with Kawhi at the three and Paul George at the four because PG is taller than Kawhi. So that makes him the power forward, I guess, with air quotes that you can't see because I'm off screen right now. But Evita Zubats is your starting center. And that's what the Clippers are rolling out. I'm excited to see Paul George in LA. It's gonna be a special, special team. So that's our prediction for the starting five for the Clippers. But I want you to give me your prediction for the Clippers starting five on night one of the NBA. I think there's a lot of variations this team could go with. Let me know what you guys think. Let's go to number one. And I mean, could there be anything more obvious? It's Giannis Antetokounmpo. And he's the MVP last year for a reason. He's going to be looking to repeat as the MVP next season. And you know, I think that he starts at the power forward position next to Brooke Lopez. That makes the most sense for the way this Milwaukee team is constructed. Now, if he wants to repeat as MVP, if he wants to take a step forward, which is crazy to think that he can even do, he's got to add a jump shot to his arsenal. And if you've been watching here on Chat Sports, you know that I believe he will do that. I think he becomes more of a 33% three-point shooter. And really, that's all you need. If that's all he does, he's going to be an MVP once again for the Milwaukee Bucks. Next season, of course, Milwaukee did lose Malcolm Brogdon. That was a big piece of their starting five that's walking out the door and headed over to Indiana. So now you got Bledsoe and Wesley Matthews in the backcourt. Chris Middleton is your starting three. That makes Giannis your starting four, naturally, with Brooke Lopez at the five. Now, crunch time, maybe this looks a little different. Maybe Giannis is your three. Whatever it may be, Giannis is going to start out the games as a power forward. Now, the reason he was MVP last season, the numbers. 28 points, 13 rebounds, six assists. And the three point percentage, you see it at 25 right there. That takes a jump forward. Um, everybody just watch out because Giannis is going to wreak havoc on the NBA for a long time. And he's my pick to win MVP next season. That's why I've got him as the number one power forward in the league next year. And I'm going with him as my pick, but I wanna know who your pick is to win MVP in 2019, 2020.